Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com and this is Trading Simplified. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I want to continue to talk about the methodology and action, good and bad. We have a mystery chart follow-up, a new mystery chart, and where the real money is. And a lot of this stuff is going to sort of dovetail into each other. I'm going to touch briefly on investing like a trader and I think that's something that we need to really come back to and spend a lot of time on but there's so much other stuff we want to get into this week so we're going to shelf that a little bit and just kind of touch upon it again. I want to continue my discussion on inefficiency and I think that if you can wrap your head around that and not really care about what market you're trading and what you're doing I think you'll do really really well. My favorite market to trade obviously is stocks, but I will trade a lot of other markets. And you can find a lot of inefficiencies in stocks, and that's pretty much my goal, and that's going to come out throughout this presentation. But right now, IPOs within stocks and crypto, a little spoiler alert, are really, really hot. Housekeeping, I do take requests. It makes my job a lot easier. You can send those requests at davelander.com slash contact. It's great to know what wants to be what do you what do you guys want me to cover and I'll, I'll be happy to cover it as I say each week if it doesn't fit into this venue I do a weekly chart show davelander.com slash webinar to register register even if the date is old and that'll get you in for the current show and you can come and ask questions live and ideally submit them ahead of time and I'll be happy to cover them there it's a little bit more freer format than this particular show which fits into a specific venue and and time there's time constraints here if you want the slides from this presentation and all the other slides from everything i've ever done go to daveliner.com slash stock charts and i'll give you enough stuff to keep you busy for a long time i'll give you limited access to the members area a couple of courses and a bunch of other good stuff and all three of my books in pdf format all right let's get busy here let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action cflt was a former mystery chart, nice little uptrend, a little bit of a pullback. It's a relatively new issue. I've considered this still an IPO. Entry here, stop down here, initial profit target up here. And initially, after a bit of a bumpy ride, it did okay. Unfortunately, it's getting whacked a little bit today. But let's just see how things shake out. And once you, as you'll see in one second at least, once you commit to a position and commit to a plan, see that plan to its fruition and we have a little bit of a trailing stop and not much because it only went a little bit in our favor so we'll see how this one shakes out now follow up on this one good bad and indifferent here's our new mystery chart this is an IPO nice little thrust higher from lows bit of a knockout move as you could see that's a TKO so the entry is above that bar and this the initial profit target is up here and then the stop goes below the bar so we'll see how that shakes out. Now recently in my Facebook group, which is free, but you do have to be a member, a gold member that is of daily.com or on the trading service and I'll put some links and post on these things. But one of the members anyway was pretty frustrated one day and he put up a post and I'm like, well, okay, well, what's what's really bothering you? Why Why was your day so bad? And that he said mostly this YMM. And you can see this down arrow is here, and this is what had him frustrated. Now, before I go much further with this, I run a trading service, and this was one of my picks off of the trading service. I have an official list where I actually recommend stocks to trade if there are any. Sometimes we go many days and weeks without any recommendations. And then I also have an ancillary list I call the Landry List. Well, this was one of the official picks. And the Landry List is my call, my personal call list, and I publish that every night as part of this trading service. But when I make an official recommendation, so to speak, I give out the entry, I give out the stop, and I give out the initial profit target. Now, when I see those stocks in my portfolio, and they're going against me, of course, I probably drop an F-bomb, okay, truth be told. But I tend to think, well, there's nothing I can do about it because my plan says to stay in as long as it's above this certain level. In other words, we're not stopped out. Larry Williams 
paraphrasing once said, in order to be a successful trader, you have to not care. It's counterintuitive. The more you care, the worse you do. And he talked a little bit about being cognitive dissonant. And I often talk along the lines of something very similar being flippant. And I think that's a secret, or one of the few secrets that is, to trading is being able to just kind of shrug your shoulders and do what you have to do and follow the plan. The point I'm trying to get to, it's much easier for me to follow the, the plan and the service than it is sometimes on my own stocks because I might not even have that plan outlined, but I do have an official plan for these official stocks in the service. So in an ideal world, if you get stopped out, then you shrug your shoulders and you say, you know what, this stock is no longer a problem. If you're not stopped out and it's above the stop, then it's not a problem. And I know, easier said than done, but if you can learn to think like this in a bit of a flippant way, you'll do great. And again, it's easier, not easy, but easier for me in my trading service because I have a definitive plan in place that I publish, okay? And it's easier for me to actually follow that plan than on some of my own trades where I tend to get a little bit more emotional and need to sort of practice what I preach. Now, shifting gears, last week I talked about the fact that inefficiencies or market inefficiency is the holy grail to markets. It's where the money is. And the reason I put this little cup of coffee in there is it's a subject when I start talking about it, everybody's eyes glaze over, but I would suggest you get a cup of coffee and pay attention because that's where the money is and that's our job is to find what we perceive to be an inefficiency and capture it now i just want to recap a few things from last week uh inefficient market everything isn't priced in so if you're looking at some big cap stock and it's got thousands of analysts and thousands or at least hundreds of institutions owning it everything's kind of priced in to that stock. It tends to chop around a little bit, it goes up a little, down a little, but it doesn't really make that big of a move. Now, keep in mind that efficient markets can make inefficient moves. I'm going to show you a really big move here in just one second from what I would consider an efficient market. And last week, as I talked about, just to recap real quick, sometimes you will get a stock at high levels that's sort of priced for perfection and it begins to tumble hard. So on the short side, it's kind of just the opposite. I almost like going after these efficient stocks that are poised to make an inefficient move. And hopefully we won't have to talk about that for a while. But if we do get into a bit of a bear market or a market that's rolling over in a serious way, I'll talk about that when I talk about transitional setups. If you can't sleep at night, go in and watch the shows that I did early on the Trading Simplified shows on trading transitions, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. Now keep in mind that any efficient markets will become more efficient as they become more and more crowded. Bitcoin eventually will probably be an efficient market as people are buying and selling it, or it certainly will be less inefficient than it is now. The more players, the less inefficient. Also consider the market conditions. IPOs are a great inefficient market, or can be at least, but it all depends on the market. Sometimes everybody's hot for IPOs, and sometimes everybody's not. And the technical analysis that we use, simple things like the buy at B pattern, like that I show often, will help to flesh out some of those good conditions. The other thing is, with the inefficient market, I had this last minute, there's an S ton of greater fools out there. Now, not to confuse the issue with facts, but, and I've gotta be careful here because I can get into a lot of trouble because I do have a position there, but I noticed on YouTube this morning, they were talking about SHIB, SHIB Inu, which is a, a crypto, and I'll show you that one in just one second. But they were talking about the fact that Robinhood is on the cusp of possibly adding it to its trading platform. Now, as a microcosm, I know one person in particular, but I know there's, there's many more out there. I know one person in particular that has Robin Hood, and I know some other people that have that same kind of mentality, which is, which is not a good mentality, but they think, okay, well, I've got this small trading account, so I'm just going to put 
or even two hundred dollars into this into the cheapest cryptocurrency I can find. Now it's a bad strategy unless, of course, that cryptocurrency is going up. So there's thousands, if not millions, of people out there that have Robinhood accounts that could. And I know I'm confusing the issue with facts, but the point I'm trying to make is these could be our greater fools. Okay, whatever you buy something, you're hoping that some greater fool will come along and believe me many times i am the greater fool <laughs> yet i'm the last fool to buy now just shifting gears back to efficient markets making inefficient moves this was one and i know i've kind of beat the dead horse on this one because i'm so proud of it but this was one was a transitional setup was a bow tie way back in november of 2020 and actually yeah 2020 and it made a really impressive move about 900 percent after we cashed out, I think we caught about 500% of that move better than the poke in the eye. All you need is one or two of these a year. So keep in mind that inefficiency or efficiency, however you want to look at it, kind of waxes and wanes. And an efficient market such as a thick energy stock, okay, lots of volume, big cap, can become inefficient. So everybody wants to know what's inefficient now. Well, crypto. And IPOs too, but especially the altcoins within crypto. And there's another word that I use to describe them, but I must keep this show PG 13. <laughs> it's a common term too. Uh, IPOs tend to wax and wane. It's like people are excited by IPOs. Right now, it seems like IPOs are kind of exciting again. So I would definitely pay attention to what's going on in IPOs. So here's an IPO Dutch Brothers first deep retracement. Nice little pullback here. This was on my Landry list. I did not put it as an official recommendation because I thought it was a little bit too volatile. And in hindsight, of course, I wish I would. But here's an actual trade that I did take in one of my accounts. You can see just 200 shares, but got in here, flipped it out here, and so far trailing a stop higher. Knock on wood so far. So good on that one. And I am free rolling, so to speak. And hopefully, I'll be in this stock for a long, long time. Remember, the, the ultimate goal is to get in, get a swing trade profit out, okay? And trail a stop higher to hopefully stay with the trade for a long, long time. And that's where the real money is. And I'll show you a few of those in just one second. Now, in this particular case, a 43% move and counting, let's hope. I know, <laughs> hope is a dangerous word in this game, but let's hope was not priced into the market. So, so far, so good on that one. Here's the ARBK. Notice that it was a buy at D pattern. We had five days of trading, and after five days of trading, or on the fifth day of trading, if it is the new closing high, with a few caveats, we're looking to buy the market and bought in here. And again, this is something that, or I should say, I, anything I show you here, I have mentioned previously somewhere else. We were talking about this one in Facebook. And as I said last week, hopefully 11% in two days. And I'm not sure where I got the two days from, but two days would be nice, right? On every trade, it's not priced in within a couple days making money. And in three days, this one did run up 11%. And that's where my initial profit target was. So I sold half. I'm free rolling now. And hopefully I'll stay with this position for a long, long time. But unfortunately, my trailing stopped there. Unfortunately, it sold off hard and took me out for a scratch on the remainder of a trade. Well, that's better than the poke in the eye, okay? If, if the worst you did was scratch on the trades, believe me, you could have losses. But if the worst you did was scratch on the trades, you would own the world pretty quickly because you'd A, make a little money on those scratch out on the second loaf that is trades and then you would catch the occasional home run for that free rolling okay so by the way free rolling just round numbers let's say you put on a thousand shares and it went up you have a two thousand dollar profit you take off half of that you're up two points right so you've got a thousand dollars you put that in your pocket your stops at break even barring overnight gaps the worst you could do is break even or remain in the trade and you'll at least, again, barring overnight gaps, make 1%, this is on a 100K account, that is 1,000 shares on a 100K account, you would make 1% overall on the account. And I'll show you the spreadsheet here in just one second. So let's shift gears and talk about some of the inefficiencies recently 
and crypto. So I grabbed a few of my free rolling trades and I'll show you all of them in just one second. But XYM, I bought here. A couple things were happening. Number one, we had a pullback, okay? And number two, it was high in relative strength. Sometimes you can just buy things that are going up. Provided, of course, it's an inefficient market and provided, of course, that market is really, really running higher. And you can see nice little move there, about a day and a half or a day or so. That 20% move was not priced in. My stop is at break even on this one and I'm free rolling. So again, if I get stopped out, who cares? I know, I'll drop an F-bomb, believe me. <laughs> I've dropped a few this morning. Now here's one, by the way, I've traded this one quite a bit, and if you go back and look at other shows, I may have talked about it. One thing I've been experimenting with a little bit in the crypto is the 230 EMA system. I published this about, shoot, 26 years ago? Jeez, I'm getting old. And it was the article I did, our first article I did for Stocks and Commodities back, magazine back in 96, if memory serves. And you can get it off the internet. Just Google 220 EMA, 2 slash 20 EMA system. I've been using the 30 EMA with that lately. And not enough time to get into it today, but basically I'm just looking for two bars of Landry light and then enter above the highest bar of those two bars. So it would have gotten you in somewhere back here. By the way, you want this plug in, like this video so you qualify and then you can get it for free by clicking on the plug in. If you, if you don't like the video, then I don't know why you'd want the plug in, but <laughs> so just like the video and then you'll have access. So you can see this was a Landry Light pullback here. And I think I also like the fact that it was beginning to rally. Now it looks like I got in a little bit aggressively on this one, but I was able to flip it out. And it's, if you squint your eyes, it's hard to see. That's 20% within a few days. And then now knock on wood on this one, I am free rolling. Now this 100% plus move obviously was not priced in. Very inefficient type of move and then of course I'm trailing a stop higher on the remainder. Sheeb of course everybody brother's talking about this one and by the way for those keeping score this was a 230 EMA system here and two things go in and watch last week's Dave Landry's the week of charts and the weekend the week before for that matter and then go in uh, or go to my website davelandry.com slash webinar and sign up and join us this week and I'll walk you through this system again. And between now and then, I'll keep an eye out for some crypto trades using the system. And I'll go ahead and take those trades and I'll publish them in the week of charts. This one took off really, 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 really nicely, obviously. And this 500% move was not priced in. There were a lot of greater fools out there. And Maybe I'm talking my position, but from a technical standpoint, just looking at the chart, it looks like there might even be more greater fools out there. And again, not to confuse the issue with facts, but if that coin gets opened up to a broader audience, then I would imagine a lot of people in that broader audience are greater fools. For what it's worth, here are all the positions that I have taken recently in crypto. Not that I don't have losses, I have plenty of losses, right? But here are all the positions. Most of these I just bought because they were going up. One or two of them might have been 230 EMA and occasionally I'll trade the pullbacks and Landry Light pullbacks and things like that. But here's the list for what it's worth and in upcoming weeks I'll follow up on these and let's let's see how they do. But that, that's them right there. Those are the ones I'm free rolling on. We'll see what happens. Now lately I've been talking about trader or investor based on one of the questions one of you guys had. And the point I want to make today is, and it's the same point I've been making lately too, is obviously if you are going to be an investor, I would suggest you think like a trader and at the least have a performance metric. You want things to be doing well before you get in, you want them to be going up, and you want to get out when they start going down. Now, just because I'm a trader and I've made a half a dozen day trades today and I probably did 20 trades yesterday in crypto, doesn't mean that I won't hang around as long as the market moves in my favor. That FTM I just showed you, I've been in that for weeks and weeks and I hate to use the word hold, but hopefully I'll be in that SHIB thing forever, okay? Or at least a long, long time. But the point I wanna make is you do 
stable positions longer term. And then the real money is in this, what I call the free rolling, right? Actually, free rolling comes from Charlie Kirk. He had me, just a quick story, he had me as a guest of honor for his retreat down in St. Lucia a couple years back. And when I was talking about the money management, he said, I really like what Dave does with the money management where he takes the piece off half, okay, he gets that stop to break even, and then he's tree rolling on the remainder. I like that term, free rolling. But you can see that's where the real money is. And if you look over here, you can see we've been in these positions for a long, long time. This one's a year and a half. This one's going to be a year pretty soon. And this one's going to be almost all of 2021. Knock on wood so far, so good. So the secret to trading, in, in addition to finding those inefficient markets, is to ride them as long as possible via free rolling by taking partial profits and then putting a stop, putting a trailing stop in place. Now, as I've said before, back to market inefficiencies, would you rather be right eventually or make money? People were right eventually in the NASDAQ. It did, it did crash, okay, in 2000. And then I doubt that they shorted it. They just like to be analysts and 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 poo poo everything and not make any money trading. And as I've said last week, a lot of people, and I'm thinking of one or two specifically, have been poo poo at Bitcoin forever as it went from four thousand up to sixty something thousand dollars where it is now. Now, one thing I woke up thinking about along those lines, and I put in my morning pages. And by the way. Every morning I wake up, the first thing I do is I write three handwritten pages religiously every morning. I don't do it on the weekends. If you're following Julia Cameron, where I got the idea from, and actually I tried doing this many, many years ago and I didn't follow through with it. And in more recent times, I guess three or four years ago, I read Julia Cameron's book, or at least the point where she got up to the morning pages. And I started doing these morning pages every day. And it's hard, believe me, but after a while, you actually, believe it or not, look forward to them. You're going to dread them for a while, and then you look forward to them. And it's just one of the best things I've ever done. And you're going to find that 90% of the stuff you worry about never comes true. And the 10% that does come true, you just kind of deal with it. And, and you think, well, I, you know, I dealt with it. Why was I so worried about that? Anyway, today's page is... Sometimes sometimes something good comes out the page. Sometimes I talk about the fact that the dog sparks stink or whatever, you know. But today I wrote, I, Dave Landry, will have a liquid, liquid net worth of a slightly absurd amount. I'm not going to tell you what that amount is, but I have a amount in my mind. By 2024, in return, and usually in return, I talk about how I'm going to trade IPOs. I'm going to pick the best and leave the rest. I'm going to use some money management and so on and so forth. And because I was nearly out of room, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go where the money is and practice sound money management. Boy, and if you could do those two things, I think you would own the world. And right now, that money is in crypto. Now, don't miss the point. They're probably all BS, okay, as I said last week. But who cares if you can make money in them? The trader's goal is to make money. You have to go where the money is. Forget rhyme or reason. As I said a minute ago, the, those people were eventually right about the dot-com bubble. But who cares? You know, the market went up 400% while they pontificated their brilliance, right? Now, here's the thing. There will be crackdowns. I know the government's getting kind of antsy. Especially, I think it, this is especially true when it comes to the uh, altcoins. And, but hopefully, I know it's a dangerous word, they'll take a while to go to zero. In other words, they'll hit the stop first. And that's my theory is that markets will begin to weaken before they go to zero. And maybe you can get out, for instance, like in the overall stock market, maybe you can get out at a 10% loss and then get back in when the market begins to get strong again. But hopefully it'll take a while to go to zero. And the other thing I found kind of interesting yesterday by accident, and I'll show you that in one second, is sometimes markets just don't care. And again, money management is crucial. Don't bet your life savings in these things, okay? Make sure you're using protective stops and then take partial profits along the way. And then try to establish positions to free roll. 
This is a, a photo I found by accident. Hopefully it's not a harbinger of things to come. In my house, when I lived in the country, we had a black swan once laying in a pond. And I got some pictures of it. I don't know what happened to those pictures, but I remember a couple of years later, we were walking around the block, and in one of the neighbor's ponds, there was a black swan. These are from Australia, by the way. Very beautiful bird. The theory behind a black swan is, as Talib said, just because you've never seen one doesn't mean they don't exist. So you could have a possible black swan move in these markets, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep trading them. I found this interesting. I found this by accident. I was looking at Grayscale's website. Grayscale is going to make an ETF for Bitcoin, and hopefully they'll do one for Ethereum too. And I think that's that's going to help reach greater fools. <laughs> and I, you know, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I think that's going to help out Bitcoin quite a bit and possible other cryptocurrencies. I heard something about China banning crypto, and it's interesting that on the Grayscale website it says China. Crypto ban, September 24th, 2024. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to go in and take a look at, at Bitcoin on September 24th, 2024. China bans Bitcoin, and what did Bitcoin do? <laughs> it went it went up, and that's what it did. Now, I don't know this sort of fact, but I think crypto is here to stay. You can see China tried to ban them, and the market thumbed its nose at that. Not that it always will thumb its nose. I'm sure there's regulation coming soon in the U.S. What I found interesting is I saw yesterday on YouTube that they're beginning to put these mining forms in shipping containers. And these are spread out around the U.S. And one guy in the interview in particular, they already have it figured out to where if the United States changes a bunch of laws and tries to ban these things, they're going to ship their mining forms and shipping containers over to Russia where the power is low, the cost of power is low, and they're going to have somebody run them. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's amazing what they're doing within this, within this market. And again, I might be confusing the issue with facts, but the point is that as long as there are nodes and people mining these things, the market will continue to exists. Now, again, be careful confusing the issue with facts when it comes to markets. Now, the point I wanted to make again this week is emotional and rational markets, which right now is crypto. And again, IPOs are still looking pretty darn good. And, you know, maybe some stocks in general, especially like crypto related stocks look like they're doing pretty good here, or a trader's and investor's best friend. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, as usual, daylighter.com slash contact. If you want a lot of information to keep you busy for a long time, daylighter.com slash stock charts. Everybody have a great day trading and may the trend be with you. Thanks again for watching. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.